I think those three presidents together kind of sealed the deal for the Democratic Party and the Black vote. This takes us all the way back to slavery and coming out of slavery and the Republican Party being the ones to vote for the abolition of slavery, the South being a very Democratic South and um, or a, a Democrat you know, population in the South and Blacks really seeing the Republican Party as the party that stood for their freedom, it st stood for their upward mobility. And so they voted Republican, whereas the Democrat Party was the party of the segregationists and people were not voting that way. So what you see is that the, you have the end of um, slavery and by like 1872, 1875, you have hundreds of legislators who are black and in the Republican Party. Yes. My, yeah. You, okay. So, so mm -hmm. you're in agreement, right? Okay. Yes. So we get to, to about, I would say the mid 18, early to mid 1870s. And you have these hundreds of black Republicans in some form of legislation or office. But then we get to president Hayes, Rutherford B. Hayes and the compromise of 1877. And the compromise of 1877 was this informal, um, compromise informal agreement where Rutherford B. Hayes and his opponent, who was a Democrat, they were like one or two votes away from each other in the election results. The, the two sides came together and it was decided that if Hayes would become president, if they gave the, the, the presidency to Hayes, they were willing to give the presidency to Hayes if Hayes removed the military from some of the Southern states that were upholding um, the, the Reconstruction era policies. Yes. Hayes, and now the Reconstruction era policies were benefiting Black people. The mm -hmm. military was in these states to be able to make sure that Blacks were safe, that they could actually vote without you know, coming under duress or harm and all of those things. Hayes takes the, he agrees to this. And it, it wasn't just the, the removal of the military. There was something with um, like a transcontinental train line. I want to say the Texas and the Pacific, maybe train, this train line that, that was a part of this deal. Nothing ever came about that. There were a couple other issues in this informal um, agreement. The only thing that actually stuck to the wall was the military being removed from some of these Southern states, these prominent Southern states that were upholding reconstruction era ideals. Yes. When Hayes takes office, he removes the military and in the removal of the military, the construction, the reconstruction era um, politicians and policies were done away with. This um, allowed Jim Crow policies to come in because the South was now once again ruled by the segregationist Democrats. Yes. All right. So that that's that's part of of us in our history with the Republican Democrat Party. You want to add anything? Um, no, I mean, that was a pretty good history. I will say that it's important to acknowledge that when you look at American history through that time, you look at the Civil War, you look at Reconstruction, post-Reconstruction, it is very clear throughout the politics of everything that slavery itself or even the flourishing of Black people and Black, former Black slaves was not the primary issue of the United States. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the primary issue of our government. Yes. You know, Lincoln did not, uh, the Civil War did not start to free the slaves. That became a rallying cry later. The yes. whole goal of initially of the Civil War was to preserve the Union. It was to stop the South from, um, uh, what's the word? Seceding away. Seceding. So yeah, seceding away. That was the whole purpose of it. The whole idea of, and of course, the issue, the reason the South was succeeding was because of slavery. They thought Lincoln was going to abolish slavery and all that kind of stuff. But that wasn't Lincoln's main reason for starting the Civil War. It was to stop those states from succeeding and maintaining the Union, right? Mm -hmm. Slavery became a rallying cry later to, to rally the North behind everything. Um, but even when you see in post you no know, um, Reconstruction, the goal was always to maintain the union. It was to fix relations with the South. It was 
the holding the union together was the primary purpose and vision of the political um, landscape of that day, not necessarily black people or ending slavery or the flourishing of black people. You know, yes. it was about it was about holding the union together. And, yes. and we see that played out in the politics. And that's why, you know, they agree to pull, you know, the military out. The whole 40 acres and a mule thing kind of gets overturned and whites get their land back and blacks lose their land. And that's when you start seeing sharecropping become a thing, you know. And so it was really a tragic event in our history of what happened of reversing those um, post-Reconstruction things that were designed to help, you know, former slaves kind of get on their feet and start a life for themselves. Yes. And I think that, you know, it, yes, while keeping the union together was, I feel like er, the both of those presidents that we've mentioned goals, um, the Republican Party was the party that for all people looked at humans as being yes. humans, as having um, some specific tenant or, or they understood specific tenants of, yeah. you know, like what it meant to be a human or, yeah, or I mean, yeah, it was, it was the like part of Lincoln. It was the party of the uh, abolitionists, you know, mm -hmm. um, Lincoln, you know, they believed that slavery was a great evil and needed yeah. to be done away with. Uh, even before Lincoln was president, he was an abolitionist. Right. And yes. so, yeah, that Republican party was kind of tied to that idea of abolishing slavery and therefore, yeah, blacks were going to be associated with that particular party at that time. So we have this um, situation with Hayes and basically I would just say it's like that he threw, he threw black people under the bus and he did it for, yeah. and you can tell me if you think I'm wrong, but he did it for the position of the presidency. Now, I guess other people could argue, well, that would be better than having a Democrat in office, or it would be the same potentially as having a Democrat in office because they because of the segregation and the segregationist mindset it would have ushered in jim crow anyway but we yeah. see the ushering in of jim crow and it's at that point that i think um the great migration started to take place i don't think it's actually written on paper or um like specifically tracked until the early 1900s. So we're looking at 1877 with the time of the, the compromise of 1877. We see the great migration take off from about 1915 to the beginnings of the 1970s. Yeah. And we see that around things like the depression or different wars and, and things like that. Can you, the, the um, can you, can that. you describe what, what you mean when you say the great migration? What do you, what do you, the great migration, the Great Migration is a time when blacks in droves move from southern states up into the north. Yeah, and so and with out the, west. yes, yes, and out west. So with the with the influx of Jim Crow policies and violence and what all of that segregation meant, segregation of parks and and um, public spaces and all of that, blacks left the south and they left in mass quantities they moved um to the north they moved out west when people um think about blacks moving up north think about michigan think about ohio detroit um, chicago detroit chicago York, yes yeah mm -hmm. so Baltimore, they're, they're, DC. yes i was gonna say philly yep they're going they're going up north yeah a now, big part of it too was industrialization so there mm -hmm. was jobs up there you know you had the automotive boom yes. you had all these things where blacks were going up for, for jobs and stuff and so yeah Yes. Now, one of the things that the the legislators or those who were running for office noticed about black people who were migrating is that when they were in the South, they voted as a monolith. They voted basically in in block. All the black vote went to the Republicans. So now you have three presidents um, basically right behind each other. You have FDR, so Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, you have Truman, and then you have Johnson. And they really played into, one, the marginalization of Black people. Mm -hmm. What was it that would get the Black vote, the entire Black vote? Well, a lot of that was to... Um, go against the idea of racial segregation. Even though these were historic Democrats, they then began to play against the democratic, this democratic South or this idea of Jim Crow and the segregation. And we see this first, I think with um, FDR and like the New Deal, 
but I would say we we see it primarily with um, with Truman and desegregating the military. Mm-hmm. And when he desegregated the military and he desegregated the federal workspace or, or work environments, the black vote, I feel like he sealed the deal. Yeah. We turn around right behind him and we get Johnson. And that's when we have the great society and this whole, um, not war on poverty. I don't think they called it the war on poverty at that time, but they, you have this whole confrontation of poverty and how do we, um, get the vote. Basically, I would say, how do we get the vote of those who are poor? What is the the major color of the poor um, at the time? Yeah. Black people. But I think those three presidents together kind of sealed the deal for the Democratic Party and the Black vote. <laughs>